Uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very, very much for coming uh, to this conference. The 1st of July this year, we'll see a number of major changes for the Queensland Police Service. One of those changes relates to the restructure of the organisation and the creation of a specialist command, the Road Policing Command. And today I have the new commander of that command, uh, Assistant Commissioner Steve Golcheski, who many of you will know. Uh, he will take uh, uh, the operational head of that command uh, as of that date. Uh, I think that's a demonstration of the seriousness which we place on the safety of road users in this state, that we are committed to creating a command specifically uh, responsible for those areas. Two other uh, major changes will occur. As you know, uh, the current government has a, a strong uh, leaning towards open data and as a result of that, on the 1st of July, we will make available all of the locations of our, speed, our approved speed camera sites throughout Queensland. There's almost 4,000 of those uh, currently and they will be available uh, to the general public. Uh, we hope by doing that, that uh, people will uh, look those sites up and will take notice of them and will recognise that throughout the state, at any time, anywhere, uh, they may be observed by police and we hope that their driving behaviour will reflect um, uh, certainly commitment to obeying the road, road rules. Uh, in that way, taking accountability uh, for themselves uh, and making the roads a safer place for all. The second thing that will occur on the 1st of July, uh, which we've announced today, is that the tolerance levels uh, at which we will book people, uh, particularly for speeding, will be reduced. Uh, that will be across the board uh, and we are advising the public of that now so that they can see that we're taking a responsible stance and an, another innovative way of trying to reduce uh, unlawful activity on our roads. We hope that we will not issue one extra ticket as a result of reducing the tolerance level and the tolerance levels that, that Queensland have enjoyed or Queenslanders have enjoyed for a number of years have actually been probably the most liberal in Australia. Uh, our intent in reducing those tolerance levels is to make it very, very clear to people that if they drive to the speed limits, they, one, will not incur uh, any breach, uh, but the second one is that they will provide for a much safer road system in the state. Our job is to reduce road tra trauma, and at the moment uh, we are today uh, 14 more fatalities on our roads than we were at this time last year. Yesterday it was 16, uh, and that's because of the variations on the day-to-day -day, uh, across the different year dates. That's unacceptable to us. 19 of the deaths on our road this year have been directly attributed to speeding. Uh, we need, as a community, to do something about that. And reducing the tolerance levels is one way that we believe that we can assist the public to better respect the road rules. And in a moment, when we get the mobile phone put on silent, uh, we'll carry on. Um, again, thank you for being here and I'm happy to take any questions that you may have in relation to those matters. So what will the tolerances be? Uh, I don't intend to uh, identify the specific tolerances either now or into the future. Uh, the, the difficulty that we have that identifying those tolerances actually creates a default speed limit. The speed limits are the signed speed limits on the roads uh, in Queensland and we expect people to drive to those limits. In Victoria it's two kilometres for a fixed speed camera and three for a mobile. Is that going to be around about what we're going to see in Queensland? As I said, I don't intend to identify the specific tolerances but as you all know, because of the equipment we use, there has to be uh, a level of tolerance which is provided by the manufacturers. Uh, we've always been above those tolerance levels and certainly uh, we want to move towards reducing the, the, the fairly liberal tolerances that we've provided in the past. What about speedometers before 2006? The Australian standard says that they can be 10% out. So for instance, it could be showing for me that I'm driving 60 kilometres an hour but I'm actually driving 66 kilometres an hour. Will I potentially be booked? No, what we'd ask the members of the public to do is to take notice of, of that information and drive at 54 kilometres an hour so that they stay absolutely within the speed limit of 60 kilometres an hour. That's a matter for them.
the 4,000 speed camera sites that will be made public, will you be making public in real time where the cameras actually are, or will you be simply telling people where they could be? No, we're going to simply be saying where those 4,000 sites are. We won't be in real time saying where the cameras are on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, we believe that that's uh, a very, very good outcome for the motoring public because as people pass those sites, hopefully uh, they may find that there is a, a speed camera there. Uh, they may not. Or they may not even notice the speed camera because obviously we have, um, we have a, a proportion of our fleet which are absolutely covert. And we know from evidence, from, uh, from evidence from research that's been done, that having that covert capability really does assist in lowering speed uh, in, across, the, uh, across the state. My recollection of what the Premier said last October was that he wanted them made public in real time. Um, have you, have you um, come to an agreement with the government that that won't happen, or, or how have they taken that? We have consulted with the government on, on the release of this data, yes. What did they think? Um, my proposal is that we are going to release the 4,000 sites and that's going to happen in two weeks' time. That will apply to the covert cameras as well, did you say or not? Um, the sites are actually the approved sites. So throughout the states, when we use our mobile speed cameras, the, the camera vans, they all use those uh, speed sites, whether they're covert, unsigned or totally overt. Uh, the tolerances will actually reflect across the board both for uh, all of the speed cameras but also for our mobile radar and for officers uh, simply on patrol. There's been a common perception in the past that the leeway's been a roughly 10% in Queensland. Is, is that true? Um, I know that there's a lot of speculation about what those tolerances are and I'm sure that there'll be further speculation about uh, the ongoing tolerance uh, debate. What I'm saying to you is that um, I don't intend to identify it. What I, I, do, I am saying very, very clearly that we have had quite a liberal tolerance in this state for many years. Uh, that's about to cease. To the critics who say it's a, a revenue raiser, what would you say? I'd say uh, that no person in Queensland needs to get a ticket on our roads. All they need to do is to obey the posted speed signs, uh, and that way they will avoid a ticket. If you're saying they've been liberal in the past, why have they been? I think uh, because we haven't changed them for such a long time, we haven't actually adjusted uh, the tolerances. I think the last time we did it was about two years ago, uh, possibly a little bit uh, further back than that. But before that, I can't remember uh, a time when we did actually make an adjustment. So that's how far back it goes. And I think that um, originally that tolerance uh, was, was uh, discussed um, somewhere in the early 2000s, um, and it just hasn't, hasn't moved. My concern is that we, uh, again, are seeing a climb in the, in the trauma on our roads, particularly fatalities, and I think it behoves us to do everything we can to try and stop fatal traffic crashes, but also any trauma that's occurring on our roads through traffic crashes caused by speed. Do you see a time when it's zero tolerance, Commissioner? Um, the, as I said earlier, one of our challenges is that all of the equipment that we use, it actually has uh, a level of tolerance built into it, just as you said before, uh, speedometers in motor vehicles, but also the cameras, um, the radar devices that we use do, ha do have a tolerance. And for officers who are um, using a follow mode for gauging speed, there has to be a level of tolerance with that too. So I probably don't ever see a time where there'll be zero tolerance. but. I would simply ask the public not to, not to worry about what the tolerance is. Please accept that the speed limit is the signed speed limit. Drive to that limit. Or underneath it. Is it? Or underneath it if they feel concerned about the tolerance level in their own vehicle. Are you going to be able to monitor you know, pretty quickly how many people are getting, how many extra tickets are getting issued if there is a, a significant increase in tickets getting speed? Absolutely. Uh, we intend to evaluate every stage of the plan reduction. We intend to do it incrementally uh, and we will look at it at each stage. So it's not like we're going to have a major jump in tolerance, um, but certainly over time we may reduce that tolerance quite a significant amount in, at certain speed levels. When will we see uh, civilian drop rate speed um, the, the government has uh, certainly looked at the concept of, of um, contracting out or, in fact, um, civilianising 
the uh, camera program. Um, that is certainly a, something that's moving forward and I think that it won't be too, in the too distant future, we may see uh, a tender process start in relation to that. Um, look, I, I believe it will happen in the second half of this year. Is there hard data out of Victoria to say that since they put, you know, the lower tolerance that was enough, it was around 2001, that that has drastically reduced the road time? Um, there has been a significant reduction in speeding. There's no doubt about that in Victoria. Um, I don't have their fatality figures uh, in front of me, I'm sorry. But uh, certainly we know that speed, and it is one of the fatal five, is directly linked to uh, fatal traffic crashes and trauma crash crashes. As I said, uh, not only this year have we seen that again with 19 of the, uh, of the traffic, fatal traffic crashes this year specifically linked to speeding. Last year, it was 21% of all fatal traffic crashes had at least one of the causal factors of speed. What do you think about um, civilians operating speed um, Certainly, uh, I am sure that uh, properly trained uh, and properly equipped uh, individuals who, uh, who are uh, trained in the way of uh, speed camera operations can do just as good a job uh, as, as anyone. Um, it comes down to training um, and certainly the operation of the camera. The cameras uh, as a device are very accountable in the way that they take the photos um, and the, the photos are actually marked with a whole range of data on them. Uh, it's very difficult to do anything to that camera which would void, um, void the film or void a particular shot. This first uh, rollout, this first branch of tenders that you spoke about before, would they be using the services cameras or would they be using private cameras? Uh, look, that would be a matter of the tender process. I mean, yes, we have uh, a range of equipment uh, currently uh, that belongs to the government, uh, ultimately. Um, but whatever the final decision is on uh, on that tender process would be a, is a long way off at this stage. Are you looking at changing tolerances in any other area, such as drink driving, anything like that? Uh, well, there is no there is no tolerance in our drink driving. I mean, they're very very specific because the um, because the machines that we use in those cases are very very accurate. Um, they're they're to a very scientific level. Um, so there is very, very le little leeway in, in relation to that. What about the 0.05? Um, not at this stage. I haven't, uh, I haven't spoken to the government about that, but certainly there is evidence in other places that um, changing uh, levels, for instance, uh, of um, the consump you know, the alcohol content um, that people have after drinking and then driving, uh, that can also make a difference. But. Um, that would be another discussion with government. The, da the data surrounding um, how many extra fines people might get as a result of this tolerance and maybe um, how much each speed camera site generates, will that be released as well or does that come down to transport um, uh, the, the enforcement is done by us. The, the camera program is owned by Queensland Transport, as you're probably aware. Um, now, I think that that sort of data has been previously released. Um, I'm fairly sure that we've released data on uh, specific speed camera sites, particularly the fixed sites. Um, but uh, the evaluation will look across the board and we'll look at the different modes of both camera operations, mobile operations and officer operations. But that sort of information won't be going out with these, where the locations are for the... Uh, it wasn't our intention, no. Well, we're simply releasing information about where those sites are. Commissioner, um, on another matter, uh, the charging of a police officer for allegedly assaulting another police officer, this is about as serious as it gets in the service, isn't it? Uh, it's a very disturbing um, revelation for us and uh, very, very disappointing uh, from the organisational point of view. However, uh, this obviously has to go through the court process as it normally would and uh, but at the same time, we'll be looking at from the disciplinary process. Have you ever heard of that sort of charge before in your time in the service? Uh, I can't think of a, of a recent case, um, but I'm not discounting that it hasn't happened um, in the last few years. Um, a separate issue, sorry. It, um, police appealed uh, against the sentence of a teen, a 16 year old, over uh, the slaughter of an alpaca. The sentence is the police were seeking uh, a detention order essentially failed. Uh, the judge rejected that in the appeal. Um, do, 
you have any views about the justice, uh, how uh, the sentencing of, of juvenile offenders is done? Um, if I could just say that I, I believe that we have one of the best justice systems in, in the world uh, in this country, including in Queensland. Um, from time to time, though, uh, police will disagree with the sentences that are handed down and where we believe that they are in a, inappropriate, inadequate, uh, we will appeal those, uh, those sentences or those sanctions. Uh, that was one of the cases that we, we certainly uh, appealed. Um, the outcome of that is a matter for the court and, uh, in fact, a matter for the whole community uh, in real terms. Um, I would not comment um, on the outcome, uh, simply to say that I'm very glad that we have such a wonderful system in this uh, state and in this country. Uh, we're probably getting into territory that I don't want to discuss. I mean, these these issues, these facts, I do, uh, I have had a briefing on that. But at the end of the day, these are uh, quite properly matters for the court to determine. So they, I mean, there are alleged facts that will be used in court, right? uh, And I'm sure that they will be in due course. Just in relation to the um, incident that happened on the Gold Coast yesterday, uh, shocking scenes in, involving two people being stabbed in front of families in the height of surface. Was that concerning? Very concerning. Uh, my understanding about that particular incident is that the victim and the offenders are known to each other, um, and but I can say that um, there will be a news conference uh, held on the Gold Coast today in relation to that with far more information becoming available, and I, I believe also a call for uh, extra information from the public, extra su assistance and support from the public to try and locate uh, the alleged sub suspect. Given those scenes Um, certainly uh, it is disturbing from, from the Commissioner of Police's perspective, it's very disturbing. Uh, but I have great confidence in the officers who, are, who uh, work that, that area. Um, I think the nature of the Gold Coast also as the playground of Queensland in many respects, uh, it's a holiday destination. We have people on holidays there all the time in great volume and perhaps that does have an impact on the behaviour of people even during the daytime. Uh, but certainly we are, we are committed to making uh, Service Paradise and the Gold Coast as safe as every other part of Queensland. Uh, and we will do everything we can to support the officers down there. Have you got enough resources to, to tackle the problem? Uh, look, certainly uh, I believe we do have. Um, it comes down to the fact that you'll never have enough police to have one on every corner in every town and every city in this state. It's, it's, a, it's a fact of life. Our task is to uh, identify the hotspots, um, to put extra resources into those areas, and we do that regularly. And just with Clive Palmer's um, allegations today that uh, some material that was on that laptop that was stolen about six weeks ago, I'm just wondering, is there any update on that investigation into that alleged robbery of his office? I don't, I can't help you at the moment, but we can certainly find out and get back to you with, it, with an update if that uh, would help. Uh, the, yes, you're right. Um, there are not that many fixed cameras throughout the state, but we are going to release them, the fixed camera sites, and all of the mobile camera sites, the approved camera sites throughout the state. And as I said, there's almost 4,000 of them. And that includes the coverts? Uh, the coverts use those sites, that's exactly right. As far as those handheld um, devices and so on, they're just, they're, they can be anywhere. Basically. Anywhere, anytime. They can be 500 metres down the road from an approved site. They can be 100 metres down the road from a proof site. And the public need to be aware of that.